In this video we're going to look at a few named organisms and their responses to different temperatures. We're first going to look at a couple of endotherms, then an ectotherm, and a few different adaptations that plants have. So the first endotherm we're going to look at is the eastern grey kangaroo. Now this is a behavioural adaptation and what the kangaroo does is that on hot days it will lick the inside of its pores. So on the inside of its pores the blood vessels are quite close to the surface so this causes an evaporative cooling effect for the kangaroo. Another thing it does which is also behavioural is that during the heat of the day it will lie underneath a tree so it stays out of the sun. An endotherm at the other end of the spectrum are penguins. And in, <sighs> an endotherm at the other end of the spectrum are penguins. And during extreme cold events, so in a blizzard or something like that, what the penguins will do is they'll huddle together to conserve heat uh, and share heat amongst them. Now this time an ectotherm, magnetic termites, uh, which was the opening screen to this video. They build their mounds, these huge flat mounds that are aligned north to south. What this means is that in the morning and in the afternoon when the sun is low, uh, the heat is absorbed by the mound. However, during the middle of the day when the sun is very high in the sky, it minimises that profile uh, so that not too much heat is absorbed at those times. In a very, very similar way to this, eucalyptus trees have leaves that hang downwards or droop downwards. So this, as I said, maximises exposure in the morning and in the evening, but minimises exposure during the heat of the day when the sun's at its highest. Another thing that eucalypts do is that they actually rely on extreme heat. So part of their life cycle uh, is the extreme heat from a bushfire, and this causes their hard, woody case or the gum nuts of the eucalypts to open up and distribute the seeds. At the other end of the spectrum in here in plants we have a process called vernalization. And there's a few different plants that do this, hyacinth being one of them, and they aren't actually able to flower until after a good frost. The most common way of responding to temperature change for a plant is minimising its growth periods. So what they'll do is in the moderate conditions they'll have their growth period, so somewhere between 5 and 45, and then in the very heat, uh, hot heat of summer and the very cold of winter uh, they'll stop growing at those points and therefore minimise uh, any need on the plant. Another example is that some plants will have tough seeds that can lay dormant for a long period of time. And an example of this is the Sturt Desert Pea, uh, which the plant above the ground can totally die off and these seeds will be left around until water starts flowing again and then they'll quickly develop a deep taproot. Another thing that plants can do when they die off above the surface and allow all those leaves and shoot system to die is to leave uh, below the surface roots, tubers, rhizomes or bulbs. So these are all structures below the surface uh, that have enough energy stored within them so that when the conditions become right for that plant again, it can re-sprout and start growing again. And an example of this are pencil yams. Now another thing that plants can do, and in particular we see this in plants that live in the desert, like emu bush, and they minimise the amount of heat they actually absorb into their leaves. And they do this by reflecting as much heat as they can, so they might have uh, hairs on their leaves to reflect and scatter this heat, uh, or they could be of a light blue or grey in colour. So this because being lighter they reflect more of that heat than they absorb, uh, and another thing that they can do is have a waxy cuticle to minimise that water loss. In this video we've looked at the response of endotherms to heat, both hot with the kangaroo licking its paws and cold with the penguins cuddling up to each other. 
We've looked at ectotherms in magnetic termites and how they deal with the heat by having flat mounds that are orientated north-south. And then we've looked at a whole range of different plants that had adaptations to make them suited to their environment and the temperature that is found there.